What's going on, everyone? Today we're here with Benta Dibba. Now she's our guest today. Um, she is from originally from the Gambia, and we're gonna speak to her about a few things, definitely with people from the Gambia about how things are over there and the relation between us here in America and many of our brothers and sisters in African nations. So Benta, thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing fine. So sister, let me ask you a question. Um, you were born and raised in the Gambia and everything, correct? Yes, I was born and raised in Gambia for a year. Um, came here when I was 13 in 2006. Okay, so you living over here now in the United States? Yes, uh, I have been living here for close to probably 11, 12 years now in Seattle, Washington. Oh, Seattle, Washington. So when you left Gambia, I mean, is it something that you just wanted to do to come over here for different opportunities or you do, or you go back and forth? I mean, how it has been since the past 11 years you've been living here? Well, since a couple of months, since I was born, my dad has always been living in Washington. I mean, in America. So um, for me, it was more like moving in with my dad. Um, as any African in, the, um, in Africa, it's always like, America is considered as the great, greatest place that you would want to be living in in a lot of other countries' eyes. So, um, of course, I was really excited to be here. Um, I, I, back in the day, you probably would think, oh, this is heaven. <laughs> like, but, um, yeah, so I was excited to come here, but I, I was very young, too. So it was just more like me coming to live with my dad. You stated earlier that a lot of people feel America is a great place to be. Why is it that people in the Gambia would say America is a better place to be than um, the Gambia itself? I think it's more materialistic things. Um, if you if you live in Gambia or any or a lot of other African countries and you have never traveled or you have never been to the states before, um, and all you know about the state is what you see online in terms of a lot of us do watch MTV over there. A lot of us do watch BET over there. So I think it's because it's, I, I, for me, I just believe it's just materialistic thing. It's just material because apart from that, there's not no big difference. It's just the materialistic or the life, um, the way of living over here. And if you see people that come from America, how they dress or the kind of perfume they would wear because people in Africa they can always tell when somebody or a black person just comes from America or another place um, based on the weather or how your skin might look or things like that so I think it's just materialistic things like to be honest so materialism but but when you actually got over here and you saw okay yes there's a materialism what did you not like about America usually um, from my experience and a lot of people's experience, I believe right when you get here, you don't like it at first. It's very different. Um, you might feel like it's more exciting back home. It, it can be a little bit boring here in your opinion. But then once you live here for a while and start like having friends and going to school or something like that, that's when you start liking it. Even usually our elders don't like it. They usually never like it. Elders rather be in Africa than here. So you have a lot of African immigrants that move either here or some of them go to the UK. Why is it that a lot of them don't say, you know what, let's, you know, make our, you know, countries good and let's make it a better place where we don't have to leave. Well, why do you still have a lot of immigration happening? I think that's because, um, while they're there, they don't know that. Once they leave and see what's really going on in the other countries, that's when they start feeling like that. But before they leave, they don't know that. They they, they don't think like that at all. I did not even know about slavery that much when I was back home until when I came here is when I really knew much about like what's really going on in terms of um, discriminations or things like that. So I think I think it's just that I think while you're there, because you know, traveling does educate people and traveling does um, allow people to see things differently. So while you're there, you don't, you, you just feel like, oh, I have to go out there and create something. Like America is the, it, it's not, but it seems like it is the leading country in the world. That's what I feel like they built it for. That was, that's what their goal was for is to make it the, biggest country in the world so i feel like 
yeah, people, they feel like, okay, this is where, this is the spot, okay, then I want to go out there and create what I can create. And But once they travel, that's when they realize, okay, there's actually a lot of opportunities back home and I can actually go back home and create. And I believe every African, their goal always is, majority of the time, is to go back and do something. Um, when they're coming, they might not be thinking like that, but once you live in America for a minute, that you're like, um, I'd rather be back home. Then that's when you start thinking about stuff like that. Yeah, because there's a lot of people, you know, here that's uh, African American, and they want to travel to different African nations and, and see it. And a lot of them, they get over there, and it's like, oh man, I, I feel like I'm back home because they don't have to deal with the, you know, the racism and the uh, cops always, you know, harassing, you know, black people. Like, you know, you see the the things here now in the Gambia. Do the cops mess with you, like the cops mess with black people here in America? Um, definitely not like how certain cops would mess with certain people here in America. Um, yes, I believe cops can be, un they, you can find annoying cops anywhere in this world. You can find some cops that are not doing their job exactly how they're supposed to be doing it. But definitely, you're not going to feel like they're picking up on me because I'm black or something like that. Because everyone, almost everyone is black in the country. So... You're not going to deal with that, but you might deal with certain things that all of us deal with, especially if you they feel like you are you are outside a little bit. Even me, when I go back there with the way I talk, um, they might feel like, okay, she's a visitor or something like that, and they might want to ask me for some money or something like that, which is against the law how they do it. But, yeah, I think that's what you might face, but not like, or I might get shot or this, that, because I'm black. You're not really going to face that at all. Um, there are some African-Americans that are living in America. And the only thing that I feel like they might say that they are facing is maybe other people looking at them like, oh, you're from um, America or you're from this, then you have money or this, that. So I think the same way I can go there and I can feel like people are judging me, um, feeling like, oh, I have all kinds of money just because I'm living in America. I think that's the kind of stuff they will face over there. But not like, oh, someone is doing this because I'm black, because everybody is black. Majority of the people, especially in West Africa, are black. Right. And, you know, I, maybe you can uh, answer this. You mentioned this earlier, but I, I heard in a lot of African nations, if black Americans go over there, you know, they're treated, you know, pretty good from what I heard. Definitely. Um, I, why wouldn't you be treated good? Um, Africans, I believe Africans, I think were very naturally just very, very nice people. They, you know, there's a lot of nice people you'll find in Africa. And no matter who you are, we will treat you nicely and we will treat you fairly. And that's the goal. That's all, that will always be the goal. So I think, yeah, I think, Maybe that's why we even got taken advantage of because we're just naturally super nice to people and some people just take advantage of us, you know, but yeah, I agree. Now that part, I agree with you because I think our greatest asset and our greatest downfall as black people, just or African people worldwide in the diaspora is that we're too nice. Now, a lot of us are starting to wake up and it, which is great. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people come into African nations that's, that's really bothering me. Like I'm seeing too many Chinese coming in. Um, you know, you definitely allowing the uh, white man to have his military in African nations. Um, you got Russians in there. Everybody's in there, but African American people establishing that's businesses. The, 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 I always say this. I'm like, I, I, I think African Americans, when African Americans go to Africa, there's so much that, that they can do over there. Just the same way that um, Chinese or the white people, when they go, because certain things that Africans see in Africa that they might not feel like, oh, this is an opportunity or this needs to be created, they might not get it, they might not understand it, or they might not like think of it. But as someone, like I said, traveling is important when you are at a other side of the world, you might see certain things differently than other people might see. Just the same way us Africans can come to America here and see a lot of opportunities that other people might not see and we might take advantage of it. So I feel like there's a lot to gain for African Americans in Africa. I feel like there's so much to gain that or even Africans in Africa right now might feel jealous when you guys go and do your thing. And I think it's really needed. I think that um, 
we should come together and i feel like once we do come together that's when we can both all of us see good things come for us and yeah i think i think it, it should happen and i think they should have programs out there that that allows african americans to just always go visit or to see something and once they visit they're gonna see a lot of things out there and some of them might actually be like okay i think i need to come out here and create something yeah, and, and and I feel that's the only way we're going to make it in this world that we have to globally come together, not just us here in America, but also with African nations and any of our brothers and sisters spread out through all the other countries, because the way um, the world is going, you know, African nations have the youngest population in the world, which is a great thing. There's a lot of opportunities over there in African nations. If not, the Chinese wouldn't be over there. Uh, white man wouldn't be over there. Um, and all these different ones, uh, France, they, they rate, uh, 13 African nations of colonial taxes still to this day. It wouldn't be, and African it pissed, I believe me, things like that pisses me off still. I feel like all of, all these other countries, they should be paying us every month, like depositing money to us in Africa. So if they're making money off of us right now, you African Americans or you black, other black people in other states. Stand up for us. Start like well, we can stand up for ourselves too. But like, come back home. Like, marry other African women. Like, you know, or African women should marry other Black Americans or any other Black people. Like, let's just come together and ask for respect because right now we don't have respect, and we might be the biggest race that does not have respect from other people. And I think it's time and, and and it sucks that it's still happening in right now i don't even know what our leaders are doing to even allow that to happen why are our leaders not thinking well, like we're gonna think for ourselves this, like all people deserve everything and we should get what we deserve well from what i've seen and just you know me looking into different african nations and, and studying a lot uh, the one, the lot of the problems with the leadership, you know, now, you know, you have some leadership that's not going to play games like that, but then some of them are, you know, what we would call a sellout here in America and that they sell out for money. They, they uh, take money from the white man and Chinese and whoever else they come into the countries and let them do what they want. Because for instance, I talked to one brother from Nigeria and he was telling me that the Chinese are, are building, you know, different infrastructure projects, which is great but they don't want to hire no Nigerians to do so. And he say the Chinese are laughing when he's talking about, you know, Hey, you know, can I get a job doing that? And that's wrong at least with, and they say whatever they want to say about Robert Mugabe. But if anybody did anything in Zimbabwe, when he was ruling it, you had to have at least 50% of your employees be Zimbabwe people. And that's right. Cause he's fighting for his country. Now they removed him or whatever. Um, I get it, but that's the right way to go. I, I was saying, they see a lot of racists here in America. They have this statement and they say, uh, Africa for Africans and Europe for Europeans. I actually agree with the racists on that because we actually had Africa for Africans and, you know, Donald Trump's talking about trying to build a wall here in America. If Africans would, uh, build a wall and keep everybody out of their continent because Africa has all the resources, America doesn't have it. Europe doesn't have it. China doesn't have it. It's African nations. They allow them to come into the countries, steal the resources when that should be the most wealthiest con what well, is the wealthiest continent in the world. But why is it the leaders aren't leveraging their resources? Because it's like they're allowing them just to come in and do what they want. And I hope that I like him prevent us from having those kind of leaders. Um, that's why being a leader is very important and a lot of people want to do the job, but they don't know that it's extremely hard to do the job and you have to be right within yourself to actually even do probably half of those jobs. So if you're not right within yourself, it's not going to be easy for you to do that job. And if you're extremely wrong within yourself, that's when you are probably going to do a horrible, horrible job with that position. And Hopefully things like that can stop. Hopefully people can realize that this is the wealth of everybody and we need to really be careful who controls it or who watches it. And yeah, it, it, it really sucks that there's leaders out there that are 
a sellout or they are just doing extremely bad for everyone. Um, I personally feel like, in terms of the whole border thing, I feel like as humans, people just need to start, we all just need to start looking at each other as colors and just start looking at each other as a race and just figure out a way to just share the world, figure out a way to just be nice to everybody. Yes, we, if other people are not thinking about us, if they're not, they have no interest about thinking of, no interest about helping us yes we should um fight for ourselves and want good for ourselves but um yeah I, I i just i think yeah we're very nice and people are taking advantage of us and i hope allah helps us because i feel like that's the that's what it comes down to and people actually standing up for themselves and like that change hopefully we we definitely need to um demand respect and demand what we deserve well, when it comes to it, you said demanding respect. One thing I learned about respect is that you have to make people respect you. And the issue is, you know, you were discussing earlier um, about r the situation with race and so on. Um, we have, unfortunately, a system of global white supremacy, okay? And white supremacy and even the Asians that's coming in, they're not coming in to be your friend. They come in to take from you to keep their global power intact. And African nations must realize your power is through your resources. And if you can harness your resources and benefit those resources and tell them, listen, no more you're gonna come in to steal resources, you're gonna pay for them like anybody else should be paying. So with that payment, of the resources that's how african nations could literally be way better than these european nations could ever be due to those resources because they need those resources um that's there in um african nations now you was talking about african americans coming to even let's say the gambia right now if you come there and let's say for instance you get involved establish businesses um what could also be the advantage of African Americans being in Gambia outside of you say establishing businesses, maybe meet a lady there, get married? Um, what can we offer you in the Gambia that maybe other people from the Gambia could possibly, you know, not offer because they're not from America? Um, maybe just like the same thing, just just like how you were just explaining what's really going on or how other people are sticking together maybe we, you guys um you could benefit and you can come and be be leaders in our country if you feel like we're being taken advantage of come and hopefully africans should have ways that african americans or other black people they can be they, they can be allowed to be presidents in africa or things like that and obviously the food will definitely be <laughs> beneficial too i believe we have the best food in the world um but I think there's you can there's a lot you can in terms of culture I feel like in, there's a lot of um, something that we as Africans actually do have that some people might not have is our culture and it's it's also some of the ways that we also think in certain situations so I think those are very beneficial and I think being a leader like you, Africa like you said Africa is very very strong and there's a lot of resources over there so if people are not if Africans are not taking advantage of that then African Americans or other um, Africans in other nations should definitely come back and be leaders and show us how it's done. We need it. And since you guys are more familiar with these other people that we're not familiar with, you feel it? So why not you come back out there and fight with us and, you know, help us out? Well, you know, that sounds very, very good in a lot of ways because unfortunately, like for me, if like I, I, I joked about this one day, I said, if I had to be the supreme leader, <laughs> like, you know, North Korea supreme leader, if I had to be the supreme leader of all the African nations, there's a lot of things that would change. Like I said, cause all the different can, people. I think true too, because I can see you or anybody else who is in your kind of position to be like, okay, like you're not going to take advantage of me. We're going to do business the way it's supposed to be, do, be done. And I'm going to gain what I need to gain. You know, so I think I think it's very, very true. And I, I would love to even see Africa be a united Africa so that we can be extremely strong to stand against anyone. So, yeah, 
Why not? See, but see, that's that's what needs to happen. See, you have 54 nations. See, what, what Muammar Gaddafi was trying to do was trying to unite all those nations. That's why they killed him. And he wanted to change the money from uh, allowing the American dollar coming there to a gold dinar. And I mean, that's why Muammar Gaddafi was killed uh, because he was trying to literally kick him out. That's what he was trying to do. But if there was a way for African nations to maybe unite under one uh, umbrella, right? So if you, you, if you can uh, unite all the African nations, you already got the African Union, so why not uh, unite underneath that if not anything else? Um, I would say if I had to be the leader of it, okay, we have to have a military. So just for a while, I'll require all young men, 18 to t at least to 21, to join the military at least for four years. Um, since we have all the resources, then you can get all the money you know you can from the resources, uh, build up the infrastructure of African nations, uh, making sure it's no different than any other countries out there because the resources are there where the money is just pouring in, okay? Um, you have to defend yourself militarily, so you have to get you know your own air force, you have to get your navy, you have to get uh, your army, you gotta get everything with that, right? If you can't defend yourself, you're a sitting duck. And that's the problem with African nations. Um, you know, they have to get nuclear weapons, which they have the uranium right there in uh, African nations. Niger has uranium. And that's why uh, America's over there and the Chinese, because they're trying to get at their uranium for nuclear weapons. So you got to build that as well, not to use it against people, but just for a deterrent for, to protect yourself. Because if you can't militarily defend yourself, any nation could come in and just wipe you out. And, and if I would ask you a question, who is the biggest um, country with the biggest um, equipment or whatever to kill other people? Who has that? Um, if we talk about militarily wise, United States. And I think, I think, I think it's evil for people to just be bullies and to feel like. I don't know. I, I just don't like the idea of people having some form of huge weapon that they can just drop on humans and just kill everybody just because they don't get along with this other leader from this other country. And I don't think Americans, there's nothing to be proud of with that. Like, I'm not, I'm not hype about it. I'm not, I don't look at them and be like, oh, shout out to America because they have the biggest weapon. What did they do? What did they do? I don't know. I'm not impressed with whatever Americans have. I'm not impressed with it all the way through. But um, I think what you said is right. Like Africans, we do have to have military. We do have to have all these things. But why, why is the world at that position? Why are people so mean that they're ready to have certain weapons just to kill other humans? Why can't we all just, just stop having weapons that can just kill a lot of innocent people for no reason. Look, there's a lot, look what's going on in Syria or other countries. They, these leaders, they have problems with each other and it's just a them that have problems. But as regular people, they're just abusing us for no reason. And it seems like the United States is the leading country when it comes to things like that. And yeah, so yeah. Africa, I think Africa United, the thing that makes it a little bit difficult is that there's a lot of other tribes in Africa. So sometimes I even say, I'm like, you know what, this whole slavery and this whole thing that happened, one thing that Africans can do is, one thing we can take advantage of is the English language or the French or anything like that because Africans, us, we have our own language that we can talk about. But like a Caucasian or something like that, they don't, they, when they speak English, we can understand them. We can understand what they're plotting. We can do this. But when we speak our language, they can't understand it at, at all. So they uh, they force our people to speak English or they force our people to um, stop learning the way we were learning. But whatever you do, whatever bad thing you do, there's always a consequence to it. And I feel like, yes, Africans, we should take advantage of the English language in terms of using that to unite to be able to communicate and be ready for anyone who's really because if you're not if you don't have any form of if you don't want to see us do good if you just want to harm us yes we should be ready to fight you and i feel like why do we get targeted as slaves in the first place especially dark skin especially west african it's because we're naturally strong people know that they know we're naturally strong and they are scared of us and they do whatever they can do to mess with us and 
people like the Americans or people like people in UK, they're using the gun. That's why when I see African Americans with gun killing each other, I, I'm like, this is the same weapon they use to ditch you the way you are right now. It's the same weapon. So like, create something else. Create something else that makes more sense that these people did not think about it. Because if you say guns or nuclear weapons, they already have that. I'm not impressed at all. And for me right now, um, I the afterlife to me is more important right now. I don't, I don't actually even care that that much about this world right now. If you really look at it, I, I don't care that that much about it because I'm like, you know what? This I know that at some point I will be, I won't be in this world. I don't know where I'm gonna go the after world, so I need to play it very safe over here. Right. Well, the reason why I mentioned <clears throat> building a military and having having. Uh, like see like you say you got a billion people in african nations a lot of strong young men and young women if they want to join like say a a, a military force is because due to the people who are the bullies it's like if you go to school and you got a bully if you are the weaker one the bully's going to pick on you the day that you decide to stand up to a bully and fight a bully back they usually going to respect you after that and leave you alone and so when it comes to African nations and why military is extremely important, um, it's because it's not to go start fights with anyone. It's not to go drop bombs on any nation. No, it's to protect yourselves. That's it. It's like, for instance, oh, inshallah, we have that. Um, we do need it. Yes. Um, you do need to have, we should be able to defend ourselves. So I think, yeah, I think the best thing that Africans can do is create something else because whatever they have right now, it, it's they already have it, and that's they will they might actually always lead in that situation because they know more about equipments like that. Even if you think about the Israeli and the Palestinian fight, it's because of the weapons that the Israeli people have that made them beat Palestinians, and it's because. And if you look at it, they were the, the Israelis were the minority or the Jewish people, they were the minority. And it's because must, I believe that they have all that weapon because there's a lot of Jewish people in America here and um, they might be the one that sponsored them and all this. So, so they, if they're the ones that create those kind of weapons, they're going to lead in how good that weapon is going to be. So for black Americans or Africans, we need to create other things that nobody else know of. So that we can actually be really strong. But if it's just nuclear weapons and things like that, if you create something that can dismiss all the nuclear weapons, great. I like that. I think that's what people should be thinking like. But creating things that they already have, I don't think it's going to be very effective. And I don't want to see Africans going through in any form of war or anything. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do think that we should definitely have things that makes us extremely strong, things that no other nation. Because I feel like if we have the right equipment, yes, nobody can mess with us. Right. I mean, and, that, and that's really what it is at the end of the day. You just want to just protect yourselves. I mean, I think everybody has a right, whether it's, it's your home, uh, your country, uh, your city should have a right to protect themselves. And they should not be um, paying taxes to France. I shouldn't be doing any of that because it's like from what I've heard that right now. Shame on you. That's how I'm looking. Any country that's doing that, they should be paying you. UK in Gambia, they should be paying us a lot of money. Okay, and even the United States needs to. I believe the same way Native Americans are getting some form of benefits out here. The same way African Americans should be getting benefits like that. The same way African countries should be get they should be paying us. Back to 13 African nations, if they would actually rise up and say, we're not paying a dime to you no more. I say, that's it. And we want you out of our countries. France would become a third world country, literally. And I that's how much money that. they depending on African nations. I hope they do that. I hope. And that, that's, that's, that's what makes Africa sad. I feel like when it comes to all of us standing for, standing up for ourselves, it's it's like just right now in Libya, a lot of dark skinned black people, even though they were doing illegal stuff in terms of trying to get to Europe the wrong way, extremely wrong way, they are being extremely abused. And just because somebody does something wrong, that does not mean that they should be punished in a crazy way that it's not okay for them to punish. And maybe they even get in this punishment extremely crazily because they're just dark skin and black. So right now, 
every right now like it it, it it makes me really sad that i'm sitting here but there's pe black people in in libya that are being abused extremely badly and it pisses me off that other black african countries are not sending in militaries to go in libya and grab anyone and knock on any right. door and grab and they're not doing that and it, and, it, and it makes you sad look how south africa gains independent in 1994 i believe we feel it so it's like why did south africa gain independence in 1994 what were other african countries doing to allow that to happen and it and it sucks and maybe you guys should come help us and unite us because right now it, it just makes me sad how our leaders are not coming together. They're not thinking as one. They're not feeling like, okay, when we come together, it's easier for us to stand together. Because even in our own continent, the Arabs, they are, some Arabs are abusing people just because they are dark skinned. And so, yeah, I, it, it just it sucks. I feel like. Well, well, see, that shouldn't be going on in Libya, even though um, France had part to do with that, Hillary Clinton had part to do with that, and Barack Obama as well um bombing a sovereign nation which is libya taking out muammar Gaddafi because he was trying to unite africa uh under one banner that's really what that's all about um african nations they have the african union the african union should should say hey listen let's vote let's send troops over there and stop that from happening this is our continent because for me and when i did the research on a lot of the arabs in african nations you know I'm, I take a hard line with them too. If you're not going to treat right black people, right? You need to go to Saudi Arabia. You need to go to Kuwait. I, you need I, to go to Syria. Get out. That's how I feel about it. Get out. I, I agree hundred percent. And I think African, I think black Africans need to just start, like start gaining respect from any, you're not, cause naturally we don't let people bully us. We only get bullied when we're outnumbered. We only get, we naturally just don't let nobody treat us wrong. So the only time somebody would treat us wrong is when they dominate us or when we're at a situation whereby we're really weak and they take advantage of us and abuse us. And yeah, we should not take it, especially right now. Like, I, it makes me really piss up. Like some, when I just go online and I see what's happening, I'm like, how can I be just sitting out here normally when this is happening? And if we allow it, it's gonna keep on happening and it needs to stop. It needs to talk because people they know on a one on one basis they're not gonna touch us. You're not gonna touch us on a one on one basis because you know what's wrong. The only time you will touch us is when you know we're weak at that moment and you dominate us at that moment. Well, do you know who um, Julius Malima is? No, I'm not sure. No. Uh, with the EFF in uh, South Africa. Not sure. Okay, research him. Like now, that brother, he's serious. You know, and I think he would be a great leader over there because, I mean, he don't tolerate anything. And he has a group of people that don't play around at all when it comes to discrimination against Africans. And you need a guy like that to take leadership over there um, and, and stop a lot of these things from happening. Because, see, the, the problem you have in African nations, the same problem you have here. We all broke up on this tribalism, right? And, and we need to understand in this system, the global system of white supremacy, we have to unify, put aside our uh, tribalistic differences, okay, and language differences or whatever we have and realize that it, under our unification, we could stop anything. If African people unified under one banner and say, we would not allow these Arabs to be enslaving our people no longer, it's over a billion Africans there. They can stop that. The people can stop that. You don't even need a the military. They can come in from Nigeria. They can come in from every nation and put a stop to that. They could, okay? It's something like here in America. I hope, I hope we do very, very soon. Um, I, I really hope we do very, very soon because it's, it's not it, it's not okay and we're not gonna take it. And I hope we do. I hope everyone has the strength that they need to start fighting for rights like this. And it should not be happening. I'm pissed off because I'm like, what can I do right now? What organization do I need to join for me to figure out how can we start knocking on everybody's door be like where's our people like it's time for us to do that it is but you know you're one of the first people i ever heard say since i've interviewed i've interviewed a lot of different people from african nations and you one of the first people to say that you know maybe some of you guys will come there and, and and lead us because we don't really see certain things and i think 
people here do have an advantage because we we know what racism is. We know about white supremacy and their tactics versus let's say someone from the Gambia or Nigeria or whatever, they've never seen that, they never lived in that. So they don't understand that when this, you know, Caucasian as racist coming to you and smiling in your face, we could sense real quick, oh no, they they not for for you. They just trying to steal something from you. Yeah, you know and what I'm saying. I think, and I think it should happen. I, I think, yeah, and hopefully, inshallah. Like I would love to see that. It's for you to go back home, and, and and lead, you know, the people there. You know, because I would say our leaders here, they kill them. You know, like Martin Luther King, they kill them. Um, either they jail them, or they have to run away from the country. That that's exactly what they do. The leaders here, you know. So maybe it is for you to be a leader back home and help, you know, the people. Uh, they're in African nations, but Benta, I definitely want to thank you for joining us on the show today. I en enjoyed talking with you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for bringing me on the show. Shout out to Kellen. Um, and I hopefully, hopefully one day I can see you in Africa, living in Africa and hopefully becoming our leader out there. Yes, and that's and that's something that we definitely are pushing that for all African Americans to get their passports um, and travel to see African nations because the problem is we never even travel to see it, and, and that's a lot of our problem. Um, unfortunately, just as much as people in African nations think that what MTV and BET show you, which are white owned, okay, it's not black owned, even though it's a black entertainment television, it's white owned companies run that they show an image of. African Americans. That's not the true image of African Americans. It's the same thing over here. They show us an image of African nations. That's not even true. They show the poor and those who don't have anything, but African nations have just as much or more than a lot of places here in America. So, um, do you have any way for people maybe to contact you maybe on Instagram or, um, Twitter or Facebook, if they want to ask you some questions? Yes, my Instagram is Baby Binta, B A B Y B I N T A. Um, my Facebook, you can find me on Facebook as Binta Diba, D I B B A, B I N T A, D I B B A. And Snapchat is Binta Diba too. Yeah, so hit me up. Um, I would love to know a lot about things like that. So, anybody out there that have important things to say or ideas, let me know because I'm ready to fight for my people. Um, inshallah. <laughs> All right, so make sure you contact her and, and get some information because it's just to say she's ready to uh, liberate her people. We always love to hear people that want to be a liberator and, and fighter for truth and justice. So, Benta, thank you for visiting and talking with us today, and uh, you have a great day. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it.